So Tia Maori wants her husband, Corey Hardrick, back. She um, made a big deal out of uh, the divorce and basically she annihilated, assassinated this man's character in the public, tried to make as many people as she could not like him, even though from all intents and purposes, he was a good guy. They uh, had two children together, one son, one daughter. They got married back in 2008 and they'd been married for about 16 years. And we've never heard any ill mention of this man. Yet, Miss uh, Tia Maori decided that she wanted to uh, investigate the options that she had on the sexual marketplace. And so a few years back, she decided to divorce Corey Hardrick. And since that time period, he's moved on. We've seen him openly date several women, uh, including a young white woman. Um, the young brothers, he's only 44 years old. He's extremely handsome. He's uh, a, con a known commodity in Hollywood, which means he's going to have work. I checked, and he's a millionaire at this point. So you're looking at a handsome, single young man in the prime of his life who's a millionaire out on the sexual marketplace, out on the dating market. And now she's realized, like most women do, that if you have a good man, you should hold on to him because you can't replace him. Now, what's occurred is what I uh, thought would occur. She went out, she realized what her true sexual marketplace value was, being a 40-year-old mom with two children, a divorcee, um, competing with 20-year-olds. 20 year olds in the prime of their lives. <laughs> They're doing new tricks. <laughs> they got a new mindset. And she thinks she's going to be able to compete on an equal footing with these women who have absolutely no luggage, no baggage, and who don't have a public reputation for debasing their man. That goes a long way. Irrespective of the uh, ethnicity or race of a man, most men will pay attention to how you treated your ex. Most men will pay attention to what you said about them uh, in your comments to them. Uh, and unfortunately, a lot of women use these new men as tampons for their emotions. And the men will listen because they want to have sex with these women. So they'll listen. They'll even listen when they don't want to listen at least until the thrill is gone. And then once the thrill of new sex is gone, they'll move on. But the bottom line is this, it's simple. And uh, this is directly, directed directly to women. Once a good man is gone, he's gone. Um, you have to understand the mindset of a married man in modern time. Being in a marriage for 16 years, for the past 16 years especially, has probably been like uh, a prison to Mr. Corey Hodrick. Now, there are some benefits to being married, I will admit that, but for the most part, your decision-making is not your own. You have to make decisions by committee. You have to put everybody first, and this is good, man. You put everybody else in the household first. You put yourself, your wants, your needs, and your desires last. This man has been married since he was 28 years old. He is now 44 and he finally has his freedom to make his own decisions, to go where he wants to go, to do what he wants to do when he wants to do it, to eat what he wants to eat, to not have to check in. He has his freedom. And once a man has his freedom, it's hard to get him back into that chamber of marriage. I think it's going to be nearly impossible to get him to take her back. That freedom that you have, that newfound freedom that you that you get as a middle-aged man, having been locked down in a marriage for the past almost two decades, is is <laughs> I would imagine it's like being on uh, every illegal drug at the same time.
because there's nothing like freedom. And a lot of women think, well, marriage is good for men. Yes, but we have to sacrifice so much. We are not put first, uh, especially in this society. We don't get respect and deference like the men who uh, came before us. We don't get that. Yet we have to still sacrifice. We have to be the providers. We have to be the protectors. But we don't get the deference. We don't get the respect that men got in the past. We're basically just used as a utility. We're basically used for our time, our attention, our resources, uh, expected to sacrifice ourself, our lifeline, and our lives for our family. And in return, what do we get? We get nothing. So the juice is not worth the squeeze, so to speak. And that's why a lot of men are opting not to get married in the first place because they see, first of all, you're locked down, you lose your freedom, you can't do what you want to do. You have someone over your shoulder dictating to you the terms of your life, what you wear, what you eat, where you go. You can't pick up and go on vacation with your friends because you have a family. And again, we enjoy raising our children, but once you get disassociated with seeing your children every day, once that bond is broken or that, that habit that you form of seeing your children every day is gone, because I can guarantee you, Corey Hardwood was probably as tired of seeing Tia Maori as she was of seeing him. And most people stay in the relationship for the children and uh, but for fear of divorce and having your assets removed from you forcibly by a court, they would otherwise get divorced. But the hard part is gone. The hard part is done. He's gotten used to being by himself, living alone. He can come visit his children. He realizes uh, that they're fine. He realizes that they're okay. In addition to that, the hard part is done. Why would I marry the same woman over again and risk the chance of her doing the same thing she did before? And that is divorce me. At some point, logic kicks in for men and they realize that it's just not worth it. You already have demonstrated to the world that on a whim, on an emotion, you can just up and do away with all our vows that we made before God and the state. Until death do us part. He, there's no allegations that he was cheating on this woman. There's no allegations that he was uh, physically uh, uh, violent with her, physically violent with the children. None of that. She just decided that she wanted to examine her options on the uh, sexual marketplace. She wanted to see what else she could get. And she quickly realized that there's nothing available for a middle-aged divorcee mom uh, when you've already had a man who is a millionaire, handsome, good father, good husband, and physically fit. It really doesn't get any better than that. Superman doesn't exist for middle-aged women. Period. Unless you're Wonder Woman. And she realized, like a lot of other women realize, you aren't Wonder Woman. You're just a typical average woman. And you deserve a typical average man. But if you can find an exceptional man, well, you better hold on to him. So I, 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 I've been in the position that Corey Hardwick's in. He has a decision to make. And if he's a thoughtful man, if he has friends around him who love him and respect him and care for him, they will tell him, look, man, You've already walked down that dark alley with Tia Maori before. Let her go on about her business. Your son is a teenager. You are in the prime of your life in that you're going to earn more money over the next 30 years than you did in the first 44 years. You have all the options in the world. You're popular. You're an entertainer. You need that freedom. On top of that, there are better options out there. That was your first wife. That was your first set of children. You married her when you were young. It ended in divorce. Why go back there for that? 
when you've already when you, you're going to the same person who hasn't changed substantially. The only reason she's taking you back is because she quickly realized you're the best option that she had. And in fact, she does. She no longer qualifies for a man like you. Let me say that again. Tia Maori does not qualify for a man like Corey Hardrick. Handsome, young, millionaire. Why would he go and date a middle-aged mom with two kids? Even if they are just, just familial association set aside. If you had a son who was a handsome, physically fit, popular millionaire, would you allow your son to date and marry with your blessing, a middle-aged woman with two children after she was the one who initiated the divorce? Do you think that's a wide decision? After she, and knowing how she has publicly humiliated him, no father, no brother, no friend would advise that man to do that, even for the sake of the children. Because the children obviously are going to be what they're going to be. And she, she could simply do the same thing again. What would be the point? Now, once you have your freedom, once you get a taste of what it's like to live your own life as a man and enjoy life and travel freely and, and take the company of whomever it is you choose to take, not have to check in. Once you get to that point, there's no way you can go back to marriage. Women don't realize this. Marriage benefits women more than men. Marriage benefits women more than men. It presents you with an opportunity to get a stable support system. Pass your years where you can attract the highest value men. Women are their most attractive between about 18 and about 29 or 30. Some can stretch that out a little bit, but for the most part, the average woman is at her highest peak attractiveness from about 18 till about 30 or 29 or 30. After that, from 30 to 80, your value goes down tremendously as far as how you look, as far as what men want from you. Men want you because you're sexy, because you're youthful, because you can reproduce children for them, because you're fun. You don't have all that baggage associated with you. You can be taught, you can be led, you can be trained. Yes, just like women train men, men train women. They break them to, into new things and new habits. A young woman is like an open uh, tapestry. You can paint whatever picture you want upon her. You can program her in a way you want her to program for her to be a custom fit for you, especially if she's open to that. By the time a woman gets 30, 35, 40 years old, other men have already scribbled on her tapestry. So she has a hodgepodge of different artwork from different men all on one tapestry. And what do you think about that? Imagine having one canvas and literally hundreds of men have put their little piece of identity on that in the form of painting or writing. It's a mess. It's a monstrosity. And that's what you have when you have women who have had multiple partners and multiple dating and multiple influencers for multiple men. They have no one direction. They're just all over the place. They're scattered brain, if you will. And I truly believe that there is a causal connection between women who have had multiple sexual partners, multiple intimate relationships, and this rise in um, mental issues that women have had. These on the, on the, uh, on the cusp, I believe is the term, mental issues. There's so many women who are now uh, taking medication and being diagnosed with real life mental issues, you know, because of, I think there's, a, because of all the different experiences that they've had. You can't have those emotional ups and downs and think that it has no effect on you. So when you get a young woman who is in her early 20s, who hasn't had a whole lot of sexual experience and hadn't had a whole lot of relationships, you can paint a picture with her. What can you do with a woman who's 35, 40 years old with two children? Her picture's already painted. There's really nothing you can add. All you can do is hang that picture up on the wall and if you like it, you like it. 
If you don't, you don't. That's what Tia Maori faced in the sexual marketplace. She quickly realized that men who are of the age that her husband is, and that's 44, or ex-husband, they don't want women who have already been used, abused, who've been influenced both negatively, and, uh, uh, especially negatively, uh, by other men and, their, and, 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 the, and the experiences that they have with those other men. They want new women. They want women who are younger, women who have less baggage in, in the colloquial term, less psychological trauma, less issues. Why would a man who has all the options in the world go back to a woman who's already disrespected him? Why would a new man come along and pick this woman up when she has already demonstrated who she is? Uh, uh, a, a, a vengeful, bitter, angry, middle-aged woman who's not satisfied with what she had, who thought she can go out there and get more, who has been telling us how, you know, she had a divorce party. What did she refer to it as a graduation? You graduated from your marriage? I don't recall seeing that in the Bible. And again, I will tell you this, a good divorce is better than a bad marriage any day, but my God, it's, it, you, you just uh, added insult to injury. This, this objectively good man basically had to suffer your public humiliation for, what, a year and a half, two years until you turn the other tune, until you change your tune and realize he was probably the best you ever had and the best you're ever going to get and more than what you deserve. And that's the realization for a lot of you women, whether you admit it or not. You leave good men. You're met with uh, all you get after you leave a good man is a bunch of hard fallacies. A few one night stands, a few uh, a few quick relationships, and then you quickly realize, my God, this is the best I can do. You start seeing a pattern. They don't love you. They don't care for you. They don't treat you with any respect. They don't see you as a prize. They just see you as a good time. Worse, they might just see you as something to do, not even a good time. You're just available. You're an older, middle-aged, horny woman who's available. And they treat you accordingly. And so then you begin to realize, my God, uh, I probably should have stayed with that good guy who came home at night. Who didn't, who didn't abuse me, who didn't try, who didn't gaslight me, who didn't use psychological tricks to try to uh, manipulate me or make me feel bad about my self-esteem. That man actually tried to build me up. That man was my support system, but I left him. I left him because I thought I could do better. And now that I've realized I can't do better, I want to be able to go back to that man after going out there and being roughed up and, and rolled around in the mud and the degeneracy of what is the public dating life. I realize that as a 40 something year old woman, for some of you, some of you 30 year old women, you realize that young boys and men are rough and they will roll you around in the dirt, play with you and play with your emotions and send you back scarred and scratched and, 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 and soiled. And so you are no longer the person that you were. See, it's not like Tia Maori divorced her husband. It's not like many of you women divorce your husband and then you just go to a, somewhere and you just are by yourself, getting yourself together. No, you wanted to see what you can get on the open market. So you've had experiences with men at that point and you're no longer his. You belong to the world. You are like a sidewalk. Anybody can walk on it. You're like a public street. Anybody can... Uh, you know, drive on it. Hell, you're like a public toilet. Anybody can use it uh, admission free. And so now you expect this man to take you back. You expect him to have the same feelings he would have had when he first saw you, when he took your hand and promised to be with you for better and for worse in front of God and his family and your family and friends. He doesn't see you as the same. You are now tainted goods. You are now used. So on top of the fact that he has the memories of how you disrespected him and debased him in public, but now also for the past year and a half, 
you've been examining your options. You've been weighing your options. You've been examining what's out there for you in the field. On the flip side, he's been weighing his options and he's been examining what's out there for him in the sexual marketplace or in the field of play. And what he's realized that he has a lot more options than he had when he was a young man, when he married you. Life gets better for men the older they get. I tell everybody on my page and I've been telling the young fellas, it's greater later. 40s is when life really begins for men. Let me say that again, 40 years old is when life really begins for men. Those are gonna be your best years, 40. If you can get to 40 and be relatively physically fit, if you can establish yourself, have a stable source of income, if you can uh, stay out of trouble, if you can still be, if you can set up your businesses or your uh, employment or your career to the point where you have steady income coming in, 40s is when it gets great. So um, I wouldn't want to be a 20-year-old again. I wouldn't want to be a 30-year-old man. 40s, I would do that every year. Every decade, I'd be 40 again. Um, it's a beautiful time because you're old enough to know what's going on and still young enough to have fun. You can date women in their 20s, their 30s, and if you choose to date older, you will, but for the most part, as long as you keep yourself in good shape, you got your money in your bank, you got your options, you got your career, you got your stability, the world is yours at 40, fellas. It's greater later. <laughs> Make sure you all tap that, uh, type that in, the, in, in, in below this video. It's greater later. And that's what Corey Hardrick is realizing. My gosh, I've been locked down since I was 28 years old, married to this woman. And probably a couple of years before that, when you were courting this woman and now I'm finally free and she wants me to come back to that marriage when I have the world as my oyster, I got money, I got youth, I got good looks, I got all the women, I got the fame and I got a babysitter. Let me say that again. <laughs> a lot of you women think, oh, I'm gonna take the kids. Okay, you take the kids. Guess what happens? You just have become this man's babysitter because on those two weekends in the month where he has them, maybe three. Okay, so he plays dad. That's six days out of 30. So for 24 days every month, he gets to pay you a certain amount of money and you get to be the 24 hour nanny. You're the one that has to take them to the doctor. You're the one that has to get up at 630 in the morning and take them to the school. You're the one that has to take them to the dental office, take off days from work. Something happens somewhere, you got to deal with them. You got to wake up. You got to talk to them. You got to put them to sleep. You got to read them bedtime stories. You have to give them baths. You have to explain to them what's going on in life. And he's free. You're a babysitter. You're a 24-hour nanny. Yeah, he might pay you a monthly stipend every month whatever that may be, but think about it. For 24 hour care and service, 24 hour care and service, I pay you a set amount of money every month and you gotta take care of them 24 hours a day till they're 18 and I get to be free. Honestly, for a lot of men, they realize, you know what? They do a cost benefit analysis and say, well, hell, if I was paying a nanny 24 hours a day, seven days a week to watch my kids so I can go off and be free and go hang out at the bar and travel overseas to these fancy places that I see other people going to, you know, I'd pay more in that regard. I don't have to cook for them. I don't have to clean for them. I just got to pick them up on Friday and bring them back by Sunday. Maybe get them in the summertime. Matter of fact, I don't even have to pick them up. If I can't pick them up, I just say, hey, you know, I'm not available this weekend. You got them. And if she says, well, these are your kids. You're obligated to do it. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> not according to that custody agreement. You're the custodial parent. You're stuck with them. All I'm obligated to do is pay my child support. And if I do that, there's nothing you can do about it. Men realize that. 
And some of you are saying, oh, that's so selfish. Well, how selfish of it was this woman to initiate the divorce? Let's judge her the same way you judge him. Just because he sees a benefit for himself or he's trying to find the, 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 the silver lining in this cloud, that doesn't make him suffer. That doesn't make him uh, selfish. She initiated this divorce. Because he can find some way where he benefits from it, i.e. his freedom, that does not mean that he's selfish. He just found a silver lining in it. Now, there was a time when they wanted to make sure that the women had the children so, because it would allow the man to work. But as we all know, work isn't the same work it was in the, in the 1950s and 60s. Men don't have to go to the plant and work 12 hours a day. That's not what men do anymore. Men work remotely. Uh, men have jobs where they have an opportunity to stay home. Uh, men have residual income. So uh, the custody agreements that, that were fashioned some time back based on what the societal norms were are outdated. And men have been saying that, hey, I want to spend more time with my children. But most women have protested against that. Most courts have protested against that. And now you have a situation where men are saying, well, you know what? I'm just going to get my passport and go overseas. In that nine or 10 day time period, when I don't see my kids from a Monday to a Friday, I'm just going to go overseas. Matter of fact, I'll leave Sunday night. I'll take a red eye to Columbia. I'll get there Monday. I'll stay in my apartment in, in, down in Columbia. And I'll stay there till Thursday night, come back Friday morning, pick my kids up 6 p.m. that evening, and I'll work remotely. I'll do, I can do the same thing for Brazil. I can do the same thing for Dominican Republic. I can do the same thing for Thailand, Philippines. And so while mom is at home, having filed a divorce and has custody and has her child support, dad is overseas having a blast. <laughs> hey, I'm speaking from personal experience. Upon filing my divorce, okay, I'm not gonna sit around and mope because there were people that said, hey, don't look like you're having too much fun. Don't look like you're enjoying it. It's gonna enrage her. Well, you know, those of you guys who read my book recognize that upon my divorce, I realized I had my freedom back. Not only did I have my freedom back, but I still have my employment. I still have my money. So I'm sitting on a lot of money and a lot of freedom. So what do you do with that? You explore your options. So I'm speaking from personal experience when I tell you what Corey Hardick, Hardrick is dealing with. I'm telling you, it's a new world out there for men. And I've been where he was. And so for about 10 years post-divorce, I just had a blast. And I would, at that point, you could never convince me to go back into a marriage. Matter of fact, the woman that I'm with now, uh, I tell her all the time, the only reason that I'm with you is because of the caliber of woman you were. But for you being the type of woman who is fit, feminine, submissive, cooperative, who cooks and cleans, who's brilliant, hardworking, dedicated, loyal, I'd be out of here. I basically hold her to superwoman standards because that's the type of woman, that would be the only type of woman that could convince me to go back into marriage, period. Other than that, I'm good. And, uh, but, but I would never go back to any previous situations, if it, if whatever it was, no matter what, especially considering we realize how quickly the children grow and at some point, they don't need us as much as they used to. I can talk to my children. I can speak with them. I can take them to their little functions and still go home to my house. And she still be subject to have to babysit these kids for that monthly stipend that they get in the form of child support. That's what Tia Mari is. That's what Corey Hardrick is experiencing at this point. And there's no amount of money you would place on your freedom. So ladies, I say all this to say, and, 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 and fellas, I want you to listen too, but ladies first, if you got a good man, you better hold on to him because you're not gonna be able to replace him. A good man 
is a man who comes home every night, who provides for you, who is not abusive to you, who is not uh, 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 physically violent with you, um, who doesn't demean you, who doesn't degrade you, um, who's good to your children, who's respectful. These are good men. Now, you can make a good man go bad. For instance, if you initiate the ill play in the family, you're demeaning, you're violent, and he responds, that doesn't make him not a good man. That just makes you a horrible woman. If you bring that out of him, then that's more on you because that's what's in you, and he shouldn't have been with you in the first place. You just wasted this man's time. And you should have let him go on about his business and actually find himself a good woman. I'll say that. But for the most part, uh, and, and my good friend and I, Kevin Samuels, we disagreed on this. I tell men all the time, don't cheat. Don't cheat on your wife. Don't cheat on your girlfriend. Don't cheat on a woman that you have a, a, a monogamous relationship with. I tell the brothers that all the time. I tell all men that. And the reason you want to not cheat is because you want to be able to maintain the moral high ground. How can you tell this woman what to do if you out there cheating and messing around? You see, same thing with other degenerate behavior like gambling and drinking uh, uh, excessively, um, uh, doing things that are disrespectful to your body and her body and your relationship. You can't do that. Now, I know my brother Kevin Samuel said that uh, uh, high value men, uh, basically it's an option that we've earned the right to do it. But I disagree. I think for the well being of the human being within you, you should make sure that if you give your word to be monogamous with a woman, then you should be. That's, that's, that's my advice to you. And on top of that, you feel empowered to speak the truth all the time because you maintain the moral high ground. But that would be my definition also of a good man. Fellas, if you feel the need to cheat, if there's another woman out there you want to be with, if you find yourself no longer attracted to your wife, okay, um, and you feel compelled to go outside the relationship, then it's time to man up and get a divorce, period. That's it. Um, it that's it, okay? But those are, those, are, those are tenets of good men. And ladies, if you have somebody like that or anywhere near that, then you, you should hold on to them because it doesn't get